just how much have rising interest rates affected our local housing market? Are we on the road to a crash in the housing market? Will this housing crisis ever be solved? <laughs> Stay tuned for answers to these questions in my mid-year market update. Hey, I'm Heather Mathias with Haven Real Estate Group here in Spokane, Washington, and I actually have some super exciting news to share in this market update. Let's start by looking at the numbers. Home prices are strong, but sales are down. Why? Two words, interest rates. When the interest rates rise, the purchase price that a borrower can afford goes down. Although the median home price is up from where it was at the same time last year, it's actually down for the first time compared to pre the previous month. We are also seeing huge increases in terms of new homes coming on the market, months of supply, and active inventory. Active inventory are homes that are not listed. I mean, no, homes that are listed, but haven't sold yet. We are clearly in a market shift. If you've been waiting for the market to top out to sell, this is the time. I don't expect home prices to tank, but I do think we'll see them ease back down in order to reach our community of available buyers. To give you some context, 10 years ago, Spokane was a community where more than half of the available homes for sale were affordable to first time home buyers. In the spring of this year, about 14% of the available homes for sale were affordable to first time home buyers, and that number is continuing to fall. It is more important than ever to pay attention to the particular market segment you're in if you're thinking about listing your home. Taking a look at this housing supply by price point, we can see that under 300,000 is still very competitive. There's not much inventory and what we do have sells pretty quickly. However, as we start to move up in price point, both the active inventory and days on market are going up. So if you're at the higher price points, know your house is probably not gonna sell in two days way over asking like it would have last year. It'll probably take a few weeks, but if it's in good condition and it's priced appropriately, hang in there. You should expect to get an offer in the next few weeks or in the first few weeks. There are definitely strategies for getting it sold quickly. So just reach out to me if this is a concern for you. Now, if we look at the luxury market, which I consider to be anything over 700,000 in Spokane County, you can see we have a huge jump in available inventory and days on market. Now, as always, we don't change our goals, needs, and priorities based on market conditions. We just adapt our strategy. So if you're ready for a move, let's talk about how to help you get what you want in this current environment. Okay, now for some exciting news. Just when you thought all hope was lost, the government finally wakes up and steps in. Last week, the Spokane City Council unanimously approved their Building Opportunity and Choices for All pilot program. This one-year pilot program will allow duplexes and townhouses in all residential neighborhoods, zoned single family in Spokane, and will also allow triplexes and fourplexes in targeted areas near transit lines and busier commercial areas. They've also made some zoning code revisions to allow accessory dwelling units. Can we all please just take a moment to do a little dance? <laughs> this has been a long time coming. Years. <laughs> To celebrate this change and support ongoing education and activism for housing, for the next 30 days, I'll be fundraising for Yes In My Backyard, a nonprofit that's dedicated to creating abundant, integrated housing for all. You can give there using the link in the description below. Now, the organization Yes In My Backyard coined the term YIMBY. <laughs> this is a clever response to the term NIMBY, which stands for Not In My Backyard. And it's a bit of a derogatory way to refer to folks who oppose construction and zoning changes. Now, I don't think name calling is a productive tool for solving problems. <laughs> it is true that opposition to construction is one of the main reasons for our current housing crisis, not just in Spokane, but all over the country for decades. Those that are a small but highly vocal minority have managed to keep building in the US to a minimum. 
here's where things get a little muddy because what we want is someone to blame when in reality we just have a system that doesn't af support effective policy making. Most of the population are not experts in housing, so blaming them is kind of futile. Our elected officials are also not experts in housing, they are experts in getting reelected. I don't personally think popularity contests are great ways to build a successful community. We need social systems that reflect and respect the preferences of the people, but also have a structured, goal-based objectives to strive for. But that is a conversation for another day. The problem with negative activists like NIMBYs is that our current policy processes unfairly cater to them. People are not motivated to show up and speak out when they're generally for something. If you're like me, when you see a sign up about like a public meeting because they're building something in your area, you think, oh, how nice that they're asking for feedback. I'm not really worried about that building issue, so I don't need to show up. But guess who does show up? The few folks who are opposed. So how do you think those meetings go? We're like fishing for the no. Does that make sense? Now that we have a clever name for those of us who want people to have a fair shot at housing and freedom to move, to rally around, yimbies, let's own it. Yes, in my backyard. Not just the catchphrase, but the mindset. Claim it, donate, advocate, own it. We all build this and our communities need your support. The zoning changes that'll be piloted for the next year in Spokane are intended to address missing middle housing. Missing middle housing are the housing types where you more or less stop building after the 1940s. They're cottages, duplexes, and smaller multi-unit buildings. Old school suburban development was all about lumping people into fairly arbitrary socioeconomic areas. It certainly had its roots in racial segregation, but it's really based on this fundamental desire to put like with like. You know, like toddlers do when they're sorting their blocks. Blue ones over here, square ones over there, becomes poor folks over here, white folks over there. Now, I don't wanna get into a whole revisionist history debate, but the point is we know much more about how to build healthy, thriving, inclusive communities now than we ever have. And beginning to favor these missing housing types is one of the ways that we get there. If you're like me, what, always comes, what I always come back to when I get new information is usually something like, what does this mean for me? Here are a few ways you can use this change to grow your wealth, accomplish your goals, and help solve the housing crisis. The fundamental problem we're trying to address is there just aren't enough housing units. If you've been a homeowner for a while, you just got a huge boost in equity with the last few years of housing inflation. What about leveraging some of that equity to invest in building something new? Here are a few suggestions. Have you thought about moving into your backyard? <laughs> I'm serious. For folks who've been thinking about downsizing but don't wanna leave their neighborhood, consider building an accessory dwelling unit on your property, if you have room for one. One of the changes that the Spokane City Council has made is allowing accessory dwelling units to be built on lots that are zoned single family. This is actually my husband's and my personal strategy for helping my parents when one or both of them are ready to transition to a home with less overhead. All right, two, you could think about converting your home to a duplex or triplex. In our home, we have a walkout basement that could pretty easily be used as a second entrance which would make it possible on our property for a whole other family if we, to live here if we wanted to invest in making that happen. Maybe by the time I'm done, my house will be able to house three families. Who knows? <laughs> All right, tip three is to consider partnering with a builder to build a small residential multifamily unit. You know they're gonna be looking for capital. Maybe it's time for you to invest in real estate. And my fourth suggestion is to give. If building and investing aren't for you, consider giving to help further real estate education and advocacy. For the next 30 days, I'm fundraising for the Yes In My Backyard nonprofit. 
Now, if the idea of building seems super overwhelming, oh my gosh, I get it. Who can you trust? I'd be happy to recommend some trusted resources for you if this is a path you want to take. Just give me a call. Talk to you soon. Can you guys stop walking around up there? I need you to be quiet. Tiptoe. Oh, I think this is maybe by the time I'm done, my film will be able to help. Blah, blah, blah.